In this video, I will be showing you how to create a polypropylene plastic material commonly seen in coffee cups and things like that. Here is the setup that I'm using. I'm using Blender 4.2 on a Windows operating system with an NVIDIA RTX graphics card, a custom startup file and the Cycles render engine. Just before I continue with the tutorial, let me remind you that you can grab this material and hundreds more on my Gumroad store, blenderbitesize.gumroad.com. OK, let's make a start. I'm in the shading tab and I have the display render preview option enabled so I can see what's going on. I'm using the Cycles render engine. Let's start by selecting either the top or the bottom of the cup and clicking New. That's going to give us a new material to work with. I want to get rid of the principled BSDF. And I'm going to start by creating the mask that will control the transparency and translucency. But what I want to do is have it update both at the same time. So if I click on the base of the cup, press Shift and left click on the top, then press Control L, followed by M, which is Link Materials. It should now update both as I'm working on one. So for this mask we're going to start with a value node and set that to one. I'll plug it into the surface but it's all going to look a bit weird until we've got everything in place. Now I'm going to need five math nodes so if I take one of these Put that up there and I'll shift D to duplicate it. I don't want it connected yet so I'll just move them around a bit. Now I'm going to need a second value node so I'll duplicate this one and pop it in here. I'm also going to need a layer weight node and a Fresnel node. I will also need a geometry node. Now let's start connecting things up and um, seeing what happens. So let's connect this Fresnel node in here. I'm going to take the normal from the geometry node into the normal of that. Let me just see if I can get you a bit more space. So you can already see it's kind of giving us this halo effect around the coffee cup. Now this math node we're going to leave as add. We're going to plug that into the index of refraction in the Fresnel node. I'm going to take the value from the top math node into the top slot in this math node and then the bottom value is going to come from this which we need to set to multiply. This math node I'm going to change to divide and I'm going to plug into the top slot of this math node here which I need to change to multiply as well. So divide, multiply, add, multiply, good, we're there. Now this value node we're going to plug into the bottom slot of this dividing node and the top slot of this multiply node here. So you can see lots of weird things are happening, this is good. We are going to enable the clamping of this value here. We're going to take this math node and plug it into the bottom slot here and change this value to subtract. We're going to change this value to 1. And this top value here in the subtract node to 1. Then we're going to take the back facing output from the geometry node and plug it into the bottom socket there. 
and you can see we've got a nice halo and it's kind of picking up the ridge detail around the um, geometry of the shape which is good now this bottom value here we're going to change to 0 0.05 that's going to plug into the blend value of the layer weight which we also need to connect up to the normal value of the geometry node now that's our mask set up looks kind of okay but what's it going to be controlling well it's going to be controlling the glossy values that we're now going to create so to do that we're going to start by grabbing a glossy BSDF node a transparent BSDF node and a translucent. Now I'm going to control these color values rather than having to click in here all the time. I'm going to drag out from here and search for an RGB node. And the same for this one. Now I need to mix these two together, so if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, press Control, Shift and right click and drag from one to the other and it will automatically add a mix shader. If you don't, you can search for it in the normal way. Now let me plug that into the surface. The factor value here, we're going to take from the Fresnel value of the layer weight. So there you go, it's already started to look good. <clears throat> now, we need to mix the glossy shader in with that, because we need to add the glossy to the transparency and the translucency. So same again, Control shift and right click and drag to mix the two, or just search for it in the same way that you did before. Now this is where our factor is going to come in, but before I come on to that, I'm just going to adjust these color nodes here. So I'm going to drag the top one all the way up to white and then this bottom one until I've got quite a light grey colour. So let me isolate this. So this is just the transparency and translucency combined. This is just the glossiness and this is the two half and half mixed. But we don't want that. What we want is to control it with this mask that we created. So we drag this down into the factor and reconnect that mix shader to the material output. And there we have our polypropylene plastic. Now, let me just adjust a couple of values down here, I think. This roughness on the glossy, we can obviously go from totally rough all the way to super glossy. But we'll give it a tiny bit of roughness for a little bit of realism. And that's it. So just to remind you, this kind of creates the mask that controls the mixing of the glossiness with this transparency and translucent mix. So let's send that to render. Now what I did find when I was rendering this was if I used just the noise threshold and no denoising, I got a realistic looking result, but it took forever because we're dealing with light refraction and translucency and transparency. But by putting up the noise threshold up to 0.5 and using the denoising node in the compositor or just enabling denoising here, then I got a much speedier result and it looks okay. Let me send it to render and you can see what you think. So there you go, about 13 seconds that took and we've got a nice sort of plasticky looking material, which I think is quite good. Anyway, I hope you found this useful and will give the video a thumbs up. Remember you can grab this material from my Gumroad store, uh, blenderbitesize.gumroad.com uh, along with lots of other materials I've created in the, plas in the past for Blender 3. And of course, uh, please remember to subscribe to the channel for all of the updates that are coming for the material library that I've created in the past. In the meantime, thanks for watching.